what if the leader just took that moment to like lean forward and go, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> it's on you. Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. Uh, if you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in both partnered and solo dancing. She has about 22 years and I have about 24. And that being said, tonight we are just kind of taking a look at a dance. We don't really have anything in particular to talk about, but um, we're analyzing Olivier Massart and Sarah Van Drake. <laughs> Link is in the chat. When you're done, we'll get to analyze it. To the screen share. <laughs> I think the first thing that I wanted to share uh, about the beginning of this dance is that I appreciate that they're not trying to do anything fancy. It's just basic close position, basic yeah. swing, weight transfers, and then a basic send out. And I feel like so many dancers at all levels, like try to pressure themselves to like be a Broadway show. Immediately. <laughs> and, and <this> immediately. <laughs> and it, it just like, it doesn't work. It does it work. And like, there are so many different reasons why keeping it small is helpful. A, you're actually connecting with your partner. Yeah. <laughs> it's really important. And B, like you need to have somewhere to go so you can actually escalate your dance throughout the duration of the song. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then as just like a little highlight, I really love how Olivier is holding, um, her right hand in front of his chest that way because mm -hmm. that's just such a, a comfortable way to um connect in like that chest to chest closed position instead of like the leader having it comfortable for them and then the follows right shoulder is like kill me now so the thing that i wanted to mention about this kind of whole dance um in general is how smoothly it flows together it really nice a lot of it has to do with what sarah is doing um mm -hmm. because sarah isn't trying to force any musicality um she's allowing that to happen when she has an appropriate moment to do that and it's not <clears throat> like she's not trying to hit every single thing all the time mm -hmm. and there's actually a very specific point later in the stance that i'll point out um that she like very obviously doesn't do something um but i just wanted mm -hmm. to mention that in general it's very it's a really enjoyable dance to watch yeah and it it matches the the tone and the energy of the song mm -hmm. appropriately yeah. um i know we've been watching some recent comp videos from various events and it's so common unfortunately to see a spotlight jack and jill that is either too much energy for the song. It's rarely too little energy, but that, does, yeah. that can happen. But more often than not, it's simply just too much energy. Mm -hmm. And um, then what can, as a domino effect, what can result from that is you, you rush your timing. Being chill is the way to go. I yeah, don't know why I gestured that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> can you go back a little bit? I wanted to yeah. point out the connection that he had. We can out of this into like a really lovely moment where they're both facing the audience and i wanted to mention even though they are so close together he's still doing what he should do in terms of connection he's still catching her fairly early and then giving her some resistance as she settles um it's not with the hand like it might usually be it's mm -hmm. with kind of like the upper forearm ish area yeah, it's like perfectly into the hook of his elbow because mm -hmm. of their size relationship. Yeah. Her ribs are just going into his elbow pocket. Yeah. And that's an important detail to mm -hmm. think about for these kind of height relationships when the leader is significantly taller than the follow. Um, and significantly can just be literally just a head taller because it really can affect hip catches that much uh to aim for the ribs with either your forearm or your bicep can be so much more comfortable and easy to accomplish than it is to really bend over come into the follow space and try to get your hand around their hip mm -hmm. and then i like that he makes sure to not leave her hanging there to go back 
in that same direction that they initially settled in. I mm-hmm. feel like frequently I see it's kind of will just lead you one way and then kind of not do another if you don't already have that extra hand connection. Yeah, there will be ambiguity about what happens next. Yeah. <laughs> so and then, then you like, kind of stand there. <laughs> and then like the best thing to do as a follow is just to make sure you're continuing to shift weight. Because if you're stopped split weight, the leader can't lead you anywhere. Anyways, they would have to like somehow get you over one foot so that way your other foot would be free. So as a follow, as long as you're kind of consistently changing weight from one foot to the other. So one foot is available alternating yeah. um that makes it a lot easier to lead but as leaders you need to be really clear about what you want <laughs> mm-hmm. and even if yeah. you want the follow to stay there you need to be clear about it yep otherwise the follow will come up with something to do <laughs> they- generally yes <laughs> 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 oh god i for some reason my brain was just like what if the leader just took that moment to like lean forward and go i don't know what to do here <laughs> it's on you and lean back anyways <laughs> musicality I'm sure that would go well it'd be great it'd be great <laughs> andrew <laughs> would probably, would probably be, true, be, in be true in most cases <laughs> i would actually say that um one of the things that contributes to that confusion on the leader's part, like, I don't know what to do, is not actually being clear about what kind of rotation um, or non-rotation the follow is using to get into that shadow position. Yeah. So if it's because there's linear where it's just like kind of straight line, there's rotational around a, a a non-moving axis and then there's rotation around a traveling axis and depending on which of those three is happening to bring the follow into shadow position dictates what can happen most naturally afterwards Mm -hmm. and um, the distinction between those three things is really important so uh, one of two things might be happening as a leader a you are not clear on which one you're leading in the first place uh, and then two, you're not actually paying attention to then what the follow is doing. Because remember, like you lead pattern A, but the follow will probably do some variation of pattern A and therefore it's pattern B. You need to then lead from pattern B, not from what you hoped it would be, pattern mm. A. So um, those are two like really important things to keep in mind. Yeah. I really appreciate that Sarah doesn't like try to style anything here while Mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out where they're both going. Yeah. And I also appreciate how he is not rushing to reconnect. Mm -hmm. He's just, they're both being super chill about it and it ends up feeling really natural. Yeah. Um, This is one of those things where if you were to like rush it, it would tell us the audience that you did something wrong. Yeah. Even though you technically didn't, but that anxiety about it and letting yeah. that anxiety come through your dancing, that mm-hmm. tells us that you think you did something wrong, which means we're going to think you did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're just, <laughs> you're just relaxed through it, it it's fine. Like being, it, it, not touching your partner for a few counts is fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And on that note that you just said, a lot of champions like have moments where things don't quite go as planned, but you wouldn't really notice that because they, they make you think that's what they meant to do. Yep. Yep. (laughs) And that's that performance confidence. Mm -hmm. Sarah looks like she's having the time of her life and I love it. I know. (laughs) Do you want to talk about initiating that unwind for? Ooh, the unwind. Second? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So here, let me put the frame right there. So actually, the first thing I want to highlight is how, um, and this is actually something we are talking about on one of our upcoming Patreons, and and the Patreon videos are starting to appear. Yes, I've seen them in the yeah. YouTube studio. Are they in yeah. Patreon? Most now of too? them are there. Excellent. 
happened. Um, but we we did a, a critique for one of our upcoming Patreon videos um, where the leader did a pattern similar to this. But instead of stopping the follow, helps if I have the pen oriented correctly in my hand, instead of having the follow here when starting to make the wrap, the follow was already passed. And that creates a, a lot uh, of issues in this kind of pattern. So the, the first detail is if we back up to the beginning, he's doing a very conscious job with this handhold to make sure Sarah isn't passing him before they've gotten into at least half of the wrap. And so as Sarah is finishing her triple step and coming forward, there's a lot of, um, compression right there in her ribs um connected probably into his like wrist and forearm um and it's, it's not tension away with the hands it, it's it's compression from ribs into whichever part of him is in front of her ribs it's hard to see right here um and because of the wrap of the arm there's probably also his bicep on her upper back of her upper right side. And so all he has to do is kind of gently nudge forward with his right shoulder and bicep while, while straightening the arm very gently. But the, the impetus for the follow, in this case, Sarah, to unwind is that pressure from his bicep on her upper right back. And you can kind of see it right here where his arm just gets a little bit further ahead of him. Yeah. And actually because she's so small, it's, it's his forearm that's, uh, that's yeah. doing the push. Um, but if the, same concept. Were with, it's the same concept, if he were with a taller follow, it probably would have been his bicep. Yeah. So the compression is probably actually her hand against her own ribs, um, because of the, the shortness of the chain, but it's mm -hmm. compression against her ribs and, um, compression releasing from his arm. It's not like a pulling. It's not like you're trying to spin a top. That's not how this works. <laughs> not <laughs> because what we're what what uh, he's trying to do is he's trying to turn this handhold right here into a stationary point in space from which she can unwind. So you can see the handhold is in a very similar position. A lot of leaders go, yeah. and that's not what we want. Was that uh, the depth that you were looking for, Alicia? Yes, it was. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. You're welcome. It's a good point. My brain is definitely kind of fried, so I appreciate the prompting. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I know I know things, yeah. but remembering I know things. <laughs> is where I'm faltering right now. <laughs> Such a weird problem to have. <laughs> I know. It's oddly specific, but I know you can relate to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think one important thing to note here is that Sarah doesn't go anywhere once she is planted and behind his back. Mm -hmm. And only once he's kind of starting to open up to her, she then starts moving. But she just kind of plants and let him like move past mm -hmm. and just wait to see what he's going to finish doing. And he's doing a really good job with his uh, right hand of keeping her, encouraging her to remain stationary. Mm -hmm. She's only having um, to extend her arm to like the limit of her ability, not beyond that. Yeah. Um, like so much so she's comfortable enough that she can even like be down into her knees a little bit she's not like up on her toes reaching yeah. forward he's making it really comfortable for her and then when he notices he's basically at the end of her rope he lets go of that handhold and then that's her job to reconnect yeah it's a good satisfying musical moment it is and if i had like any critique of this dance um i was disappointed that after this moment there's kind of like a call and response nature to this part of the song 
right? Um, and Sarah clearly wants to continue with the response element, but he kind of just comes out of it really quickly, um, which in my opinion is an unfortunate choice. And then we have again, that like where your back is to your partner, mm -hmm. don't do anything abnormal. <laughs> Right. And this is one of those instances where he's making it really clear that it's mm -hmm. a stopping moment Yeah, with this hand. He's really cushioning her um, yeah. as she settles over this foot. Mm -hmm. And that indicates to her that she can hang out yeah. and just wait. So that's yeah, different I... from the shifting side to side that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that... Um sometimes what happens is like a follow will kind of get this stopping signal like he's doing for Sarah. But then after that, once they have stopped, then they will start again before we know what's happening really. Um, and it just, it makes things confusing is what it happens right. like. <laughs> yeah. And some Thing that might compound that is uh, leaders need to learn how to cushion a stop so it's not just right. a sudden like ricochet moment because yeah. if, if it's sudden out of nowhere and not cushioned the follow might literally rebound out of it mm -hmm. um, but if you cushion it and you also um, help by making the stop just like inside that foot so her center is actually not getting over this foot mm -hmm. um it it kind of puts her in more of a split weight position for this stop which encourages the stop even further uh than if he were to have let her hip get over further so she would be settled on that foot and then yeah. ready to go i also think it's important that he gets back in her line of sight pretty quickly Mm -hmm. because he's not really um, connected to her. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really nice um, styling choice, but also nice moment for Sarah to have. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate for the song. I think it's appropriate for the lead. And then he lets her take her time. Like he's not rushing her out of it. Yeah. And something that I'm now starting to realize about this dance is it's really balanced. Like he, he's making sure that they're taking turns, having their own individual moments. And then they're sharing larger musical moments, like phrase changes, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, so neither one of them is dominating the dance. It, yeah. It's balanced musically and is partnered really mm -hmm. well. Um, not just connection, but musically. Yeah. So this is the moment that I was talking about earlier um, for the musicality aspect of it. Um, there is a break that happens here um, and then the start of a new phrase basically. So what doesn't happen is Sarah doesn't acknowledge the like three strong beats that happen there mm -hmm. she just continues with these illusion uh turns <laughs> yeah broken wrist turns <laughs> illusion turns <laughs> i like how i got the first half of it and i couldn't think of turns <laughs> anyways <laughs> but she just lets it continue she doesn't try to like get in some styling for that which like she probably could have if she wanted to do something but I yeah. I think that it is nice that she didn't and then as a partnership they acknowledge the start of the new phrase instead of the end mm -hmm. yeah because like it would have been nice to acknowledge those things but she was in mm -hmm. a position where she would have had to done like a lot of extra work to yeah. safely in a partnered way contribute that yeah. kind of musicality yeah. and um when you have those moments and this is something i <laughs> i try to tell myself all the time like if there are like three quick things one after the other you don't have to hit every single one of them yeah 
Like if you hit the first one or the last one, usually that's good. (laughs) So just as an aside. Yeah. I, I just think it's important to, you know, not worry about acknowledging everything in the music, especially if there's like a phrase change of some sort and you're already kind of in the middle of something. I think it's generally best to just let that continue and then acknowledge the next moment that you can mm-hmm. where it's appropriate. Yeah. And that's, that brings us to something that like, cause like we're often taught, especially for those of us who compete, that one of our jobs, especially the higher level we get is to accent more and more of the music. Yeah. Um, and that tends to get rewarded competitively. Mm-hmm but the end result tends to be less and less partnered dances where, because musicality in a partner dance needs to be contextual. Mm -hmm. It it has to fit into the context of what is happening in the partnership. Um, And that nuance seems to be getting lost these days, which I know is really frustrating personally because I'm like I am here to dance with another person right. <laughs> I'm here to dance dance with keyword with yeah not at mm-hmm. yeah um, <laughs> dance at because <laughs> you know like I, I tend to I tend to not be the kind of person that dances at people but I have definitely been danced at mm, yeah or next to that's that's that was really really bad where you're just yeah. like wow I don't exist do I <laughs> like you're either like the main audience or you don't exist yeah <laughs> and neither neither are fun. No. neither are good options but um this dance just flows very freely and like there's not a lot of choppiness to it um when you do start trying to add in styling pieces where it's a little bit awkward to do so um it just kind of disrupts the flow of things Mm -hmm. all right this is that anchor I was referring to earlier yeah it's just like having the time of her (laughs) life so good because she's she's basically getting a really great hitch compression into the anchor and she's like yeah (laughs) same Sarah same There's one thing that I want to mention because we watched um, a particular dance recently. Um, can you go back just a little bit to right after that anchor, like going into the compression? Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to mention is if you look at Sarah, she's kind of looking at the ground, but she's paying attention to the connection. And then as she kind of looks up towards him, like because she's going for that left hand you know she's gonna rotate open that way but she doesn't do it it like right away and she's making sure that she sees where his hand is before she's connecting to it and then Mm -hmm. rotating yep and like that's not directly looking at it but you know kind of like peripheral vision yeah like is important (laughs) yeah just because I can uh I just want to highlight so this this tends to be a leader's muscle memory for this kind of side shaped sugar push vibe which I love as a pattern but like if your follow is a head taller than you they (laughs) they can't they can't reach that (laughs) and they're already (laughs) tipping over before there's even any compression so just you know just ends up in like locked arm position just side note (laughs) (laughs) Aaron said I'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) we'll we'll work on it it's okay slowly training you (laughs) (laughs) and then I love here where we kind of have that um footwork moment when we're traveling yeah it's really organic like Mm -hmm. it's coming from 
really strong swing and shag face mm -hmm. and it's very connected and that's what allows it to be organic yeah. like the connection doesn't get focused on enough in those kind of patterns if you ask me like yeah yeah I agree um and there's like the two components to that in particular is a like good connection um strong leading but then also from the follows side of things like making sure you have eyes on what's going on and trying mm -hmm. to mirror mm -hmm. that's what makes these things work and yeah. said or in general <laughs> or in general uh and then another thing that's really helpful in these kind of patterns is making sure there is like space between you two um yeah. so that way there is room for both of your feet to go in between the partnership yeah. I can't tell you how many times I have accidentally tried to like hug my leader's ankles. Like I've gotten yeah. good at like avoiding that now where I'll just abort out of the situation, but it's so frustrating. I'm like, I would like to do pretty feet things, <laughs> but there is no space for me. So I usually end up doing the opposite instead of coming in and through the center, I will rotate the opposite direction and go out to the side, which tends mm -hmm. to like deeply confused some of my leaders and I'm like I, there was no room did you want me to kick your foot is that what you want I mean if that's what you want we only have two options here <laughs> I have delicate toes I don't want to dislocate them so I'm not gonna even if you want me to but <laughs> Sarah just looks so pleased it's great I know right so once again he's doing one of those wraps and he's making sure that the wrap is beginning to the, his right instead of in front of him or to his left. Yeah. There's just nowhere to go if you do it when you're already more. Yeah, because as a leader, you get overextended. You tend to like fall forward off the edge of your toes and then you have no strength from which to lead the follow out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think I want to talk about the follow through of that right hand right there. Sounds good. <laughs> so because he's leading by uh, kind of like popping his arm forward, so applying compression to the back of her ribs to lead her out of that wrap. So because she has already been led forward with rotation, the handhold is an accessory at that point. It's it's it follows through. A lot of leaders will do the, the the yoink and then if they want to go up it's continuing to pull through that motion um whereas here um basically he is following through with what her hand is already doing and then when it gets more in between them and she can like see him he starts gently lifting it up mm -hmm if if i had any critique i would want the hand to maybe go half a handhold further that way <laughs> just to get like really nitty-gritty um so she isn't having the back bend under that turn but otherwise it's it's an accessory and a follow-through with the rotation she is already doing the handhold mm -hmm. did not initiate that rotation yeah all right, and, and then here here is the moment. If if we watch Kyle in the back, Alicia pointed this out. Kyle needs to work on his fingers because he just he just does hustle arms. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Bam. <laughs> so delightful. I love how he's just like laughing to himself about it. <laughs> like <there's laughs> <just kidding. laughs> <laughs> All right, so contextually, we're now like two thirds of the way through this spotlight. And so you can already tell, like, I'm not framing through it any faster, but more is happening. So they are escalating what they're doing. There, there's yeah. more energy, um, more complexity. Um, but what I appreciate is it's not uh, him running her up and down the slot. Yeah. He, he's adding that energy and complexity through more um, training places or closed mm -hmm. position patterns, yeah. which are significantly 
a more manageable um, for both partners. So it's a lot easier on the follow, but it matches the tone of the song because this is a much lower energy song. So the higher, the high energy part of your dance to a low energy song still has to be appropriate energy wise for the music. Yeah. Look at all this space she had for her foot. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And I just her frame in general. Space. I know her frame is comfortable. She's pitching forward because like there's connection for her to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and she is at zero risk of hurting herself or him. Yeah. I just wanted to take a look at what his arm does because he's in kind of a rotated open position almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see how like the handhold is giving her a boring old push break mm -hmm. while his body is doing something different. Yeah. So he is not torquing her hand inward mm -hmm. while he's doing that rotation. Yeah. His elbow is kind of going back behind him. Yeah. It's important because even though he's doing something different, he's keeping it the same for her. Yeah. Like a lot of the times we do want to communicate through the handhold what our body is yeah. doing, but with the caveat that we don't want to break someone's frame in order to communicate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he does a good job of kind of putting himself in the awkward position. Mm -hmm. Which is the leader's job. Yeah. Because as I've said multiple times, the leader knows what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah. Or at least that's the hope, right? That's <laughs> true. I also really like the styling choice from Sarah. It's just like a nice crossover mm -hmm. back. Really, really simple mm -hmm. and lovely. And then I love how he does his own version of it into the anchor. Mm hmm he comes to her because <sighs> this is a very like signature Sarah hanging yeah. back um, kind of anchor and very delayed weight transfer and mm -hmm. so it's if you're paying attention as a leader it's really easy to see if and when your follow is doing something like that to know yeah. oh I should come towards them I should not yeet them at me <laughs> from that position <laughs> it won't end well <laughs> With great power to yeet comes great responsibility. Yeah. I am so sorry. <sighs> but true. <laughs> I want to mention what Sarah's doing um, with the hand that she does not have connected up above her head. Yeah, her left hand. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, because of this position she's getting into, she is kind of draping the arm over kind of the side of him and using that to help um, balance, get a little extra connection. There's a variety of reasons you can do that, but I just wanted to mention it. It's just not fair. I would like judo chop the leader's armpit. <laughs> Either that or like really like bend over to get their hip, but hey. I really like that she kind of uses the extra stability that she has with that mm -hmm. hand to like really reach behind her. Just a really nice line, mm -hmm. um, which would be uh, a kind of uncomfortable um, without that extra connection point. And B, it wouldn't be as stable for her. Right. And then it's creating this really lovely resisted release across her chest, which just mm -hmm. naturally leads yeah. into a one foot. Mm -hmm. I love how she spotted Kyle right there. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> He's doing such a lovely job of like maintaining her axis. Mm-hmm through this yeah i also want to mention where his left hand goes initially because he kind of wants to 
move through this together a little bit. Mm-hmm. So he drapes the arm over Sarah's upper upper arm and it's yeah. above her elbow, but it's like full contact with the wrist. Mm-hmm. And like you can see how much he is in an awkward position with his shoulder and elbow mm-hmm. to, to create space for her head. Eh. Heads are important. They Neck are. comfort is important. And so basically, like, right about here, he's basically having that handhold there as just like a a guide rail to follow through with her momentum. Mm -hmm. But when she starts coming around the corner here, it's probably resisting her left side closing. So there's some compression in this direction on her Mm -hmm. arm to help add stability for her while this hand is guiding her right side open yeah so that way there's a lot of stability Mm -hmm. both of his hands are facing towards him because Mm -hmm. all of sarah is wanting to move forward and so he's slightly resisting that yeah in both hands not just one Mm -hmm. if you have just one it's gonna be off it's (laughs) it's gonna feel uncomfortable (laughs) yeah I love her little like jumps. <laughs> I know. And I feel like at this moment it's appropriate for her to add those in. Whereas like earlier when they were doing those like illusion turns of sorts, uh, mm-hmm. she didn't add anything like that in. Um, yeah. But we're kind of getting more towards the end of the dance. So it's more appropriate to add something like that. Yeah, it would have been too much too soon earlier especially for the lower energy of this song yeah but now Um, we're kind of getting to that and is just digging this song (laughs) i also love how both tebow and nicole are just like recording (laughs) (laughs) if nobody if people aren't following uh tebow and nicole on instagram uh uh go forth and do the thing clicky clicky because they're also uh their dog Puff Cloud Mia at Puff Cloud Mia. The, the dog has their own Instagram. Oh. And it is a delightful white fluffy Pomeranian that only yeah. brings delight into your life. So <laughs> also follow their dog. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron said, My pup's cuter. <laughs> <laughs> my kitties are cuter. <laughs> we shall have a war whose pet is the cutest so this is like a really interesting connection before we go into um this head roll mm-hmm. just so many extra connection points mm-hmm. and so his his oh. arms are both in very different places sorry <laughs> yeah it's okay i think we both stopped for the other person to talk and then nobody said anything yeah (laughs) it works well um one of the nice things about having like lots of connection points as a leader especially like getting this handhold earlier is then you have more options Mm -hmm. um instead of like if he were to only have the hand across her shoulders that would limit what you could do next i guess that could be said for like a lot of things but when you're in a, a more complex connection point right here that has maybe more points of danger (laughs) for your for your joints um having more exits available to you here here and here it's very helpful i am so sorry (laughs) airline stewardess (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, just to highlight, and I know this is like partially the privilege of how tiny Sarah is, um, but he's lifting his elbow up and he is not pushing her shoulder down for this neck roll. Yeah. So we are like right up to the end now. So there's more hopping, more playfulness. Yeah, I really enjoyed the way that they um, added some more energy to that kind of compression 
Oh my God, this hop of Olivier is reminds me of Andrew Slack so much all of a sudden. <laughs> I love that towards the end of this, we're getting some more um, up and down movement as well. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of the beginning of the dance in middle was pretty, you know, flat, like there wasn't a lot really of level smooth. changing. Um, and then adding in more energy, like bringing in that element of, you know, up and down as well, that level change, it just kind of naturally adds more energy to it. Mm hmm and standing ovation, we have arrived at the end. Uh, nice hug, hugs are the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, in uh, two weeks, we are doing uh, another just like analyze a dance, not with any particular topic in mind. And I think it's going to be Ben Morris and uh, Cameo McHenry. And then at the end of the month, uh, on the 27th of March at 1 p.m. Pacific, we're doing another uh, What Went Wrong workshop, which will be free for Patreon supporters, um, but only $10 a person for everybody else. Yeah, very looking forward to that. Hope to see you all there. And uh, barring my knee refusing to heal, we'll be at All-Star Sweet Jam. We will. Please knock on wood. Please. Pray for me, pray for my knee, because it is mad. <laughs> yeah. It is impressively mad. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> we will see you all next time. <laughs> do you do this thing, Alicia, when you're watching just like a benign piece of media, like a TV show or a movie, and then like a partner dance moment happens and you like brace yourself, your whole body just like. <laughs> Yeah. So you're like, oh God, what's it going to be this time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have come to just not censor myself. So last night, my partner and I were watching an episode of Deep Space Nine, like season six, and there was some waltz. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, just like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's more often painful. <laughs> yeah. And then I try to do this so I can see everyone. And then I have the chat oh, that's up. Weird. <laughs> was your you, like? Did you boxes? see yourself for a second? Yes, <laughs> it was like right under where mine was. <laughs> so it was like me and like both slots. It was yeah. Gross. I was trying to snap my video window to my main monitor, but since the 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 seam between the two monitors is right there, anyways. Um, because of that, what? Sorry, there's like like a really long horn outside okay. and there's people like screaming. I don't know what's going okay. on. I saw your face and I'm like, did I say something really no. bad? Okay, cool. I was just very alarmed. <laughs> ben Morris looks like he left the stove on. He has like that kind of face right now. But I'm, you, you see it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say? I love the moment where Kyle is like over her shoulder and like <laughs> mimicking the hand <laughs> styling that she does. I didn't see that. <laughs> he does like a full hustle point. I know. <laughs> what what I love awesome. is like right around, I want to say like 310. Yeah, 310. There's this one particular anchor and Sarah has this face when she, the, the connection is delicious. And, and she has that face for that anchor, right? At like 310. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's so great. <laughs>